Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome again in another live session during Ramadan. Many people, Allah Azza wa Jal, have blessed with guidance during Ramadan. Some of them were way out, way off, and Allah Azza wa Jal brought them to the right track and to the right path. Some were on the track, but were reluctant, hesitant, had shortcomings, and Allah Azza wa Jal enabled them to uh, make up and catch up. And some were righteous people, and Allah Azza wa Jal enabled them to increase in acts of virtue. Because this is a season of competition. It's, it's a race towards Allah. It's a race towards Jannah. It's a, a race towards saving ourselves from the fire of hell. Allah Azza wa Jal in this season, in this month, in this blessed period, called upon people to hasten, called upon them to take advantage of this opportunity, and therefore righteous people and those whom Allah Azza wa Jal blessed to repent, hastened. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ and the foremost in faith and action will be the foremost in the hereafter in paradise. What is the prize for these people? Those are the ones brought near to Allah Azza wa The prize, the consequence, the reward is huge. It's deserving, it's worthy taking the time and the effort and giving up everything in order to win this prize. Just so that we would be following into the footsteps of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the, the first and foremost in everything. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He always hastened to goodness and no one was ever able to uh, win or precede him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will be the first to enter Jannah, as in the narration in Sahih Muslim. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I would go to the door of Jannah and request the uh, keeper to open the door for me. And he would say, after asking him in some of the narrations, he would ask, who is this? He would say, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would say, I was asked to open to you and not to open to anyone before you. And I will not stand up for anyone after you. He stood up. He would stand up for the Prophet ﷺ out of glorification and honor to the Prophet ﷺ, reflecting his status and rank in the sight of Allah ﷺ. And he was not the only Prophet ﷺ. Other Prophets, his brothers from the Prophets and the Messengers were likewise. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was like that as Allah Azza wa informed us. He say, him saying, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّ لِتَرْضَى And I hasten to you, my Lord, to please you. These words of Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam reflected how eager and keen he was to hasten and rush to the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Race to that big prize from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is because being deliberate is though praised in other matters, but it's not praised when it comes to matters of Akhirah. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is reported by Abu Dawood and classified as authentic by uh, Al-Albani. He said, being deliberate is good in everything except in matters pertaining to the Akhirah. Matters that bring you near to Allah Azza wa Jal. Matters that make your scale of good deeds, record of good deeds heavy. We do not apply being de deliberate. We apply hastening, rushing, competing, racing. That's what we apply when it comes to Akhirah, when it comes to the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, when it comes to the record of good deeds. In the book of Imam Muslim, 
so that we would uh, see an example of this lofty generation raised by the best of uh, the creation. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the companions radiallahu anhum. In the book of Imam Muslim, in the, during the battle of Badr, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the uh, companions not to do anything before he gives instructions. And then the companions adhered and they stayed put. So when the kuffar, the disbelievers and the polytheists of Quraysh came near to the area of Badr, he, the, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet said, Stand up! قُومُوا إِلَىٰ جَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ Stand up and hasten to a jannah, the size of which is wider than what's between the heavens and the earth. Umair ibn al-Humam, رضي الله عنه, he's one of the Ansar. He said, O Messenger of Allah, Jannah is wider than or as wide as the heavens and the earth. He said, yes, indeed. He said, Bakhin Bakh. This is an expression in Arabic used to reflect uh, astonishment and how lofty that thing that they're addressing is. So the Prophet ﷺ said, what makes you say Bakhin Bakh? He said, nothing, O Messenger of Allah, except that I hope to be amongst the people of this Jannah that you're describing. He, sallallahu alayhi wa addressed him saying, you are one of them. You will be of the people of this Jannah. So he had a, a pouch, a small bag, which he kept some dates in. And he ate the first one. And then he looked and he said, for me to finish this until I enter Jannah, is going to be a long period to eat, to eat two, three dates. So he tossed them and he went forward. And he was martyred for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and was indeed amongst the people of Jannah. Hastening to good is the best thing to do because you don't know if the opportunity will ever come back again. And you don't know if you will live if ever another opportunity should come. Umair radiallahu anhu said a, a, a statement. If you, if you think about it, him eating three dates or two dates might not take him a minute or a minute and a half. But if you compare that to what it said it is delaying you from, it is delaying him from actually enter that Jannah. The description of which was given to us by Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Who would not long? Who would not hasten? Who would not rush? Who would not race and compete? to enter to that Jannah. رضي الله عنه وعن الصحابة أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, the ten nights start tonight. Few days left. Few days left. Nine or ten. We don't know. Let us take advantage of this. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi said, by Allah, if I was told that night, the night of Al-Qadr was one night in a year, I would stand up in prayer for the entire year. How easy it is when Allah Azza wa Jal put it in a window of ten nights only. Allah Azza wa Jal is merciful. Allah Azza wa Jal is generous. Allah Azza wa Jal is benevolent. He made things easy for us to enter Jannah. And He calls us to enter Jannah. All we have to do is take initiative. All we have to do is take the first step. 
that initiative by taking the first step is it because he will help in the rest he will help me and you carry on until we accomplish what we want if we are truthful and sincere if we are truthful if we are sincere with Allah Azza wa Jal the reward is abundant it is Jannah and it might be too late if we lose this Ramadan we might be amongst those who say, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish I had set forth for my life. Let us hasten. It's not a matter of choice. It's not like, do I want to rescue myself from the fire of hell and enter Jannah or not? Let me think about it. We have no choice. We must. And it's not a choice for us to hasten and not to hasten. I'll give an example. If someone is being sentenced to death because he killed someone. And then before they sentenced him, they, before they applied the sentence to him, they said, you know, if you go to the family of the uh, deceased and you ask pardon and they, give, they pardon you and forgive you, you won't be killed. The sentence will stop. It will not be applied. I wouldn't imagine anyone walking up to them and say, Hey guys, uh, I don't have time. You know, you want to forgive me? Or else I've got other business to attend to. I got to be killed, you know? No, you would go cry. Please forgive me. I'm wrong. I wronged myself. I transgressed the limits. You would cry. So let us hasten. Let us take this serious. Let us cry to Allah Azza wa Jal. Let's show sincerity and truthfulness to Allah Azza wa Jal. Let's humble ourselves to Allah Azza wa Jal. Show humility to Allah Azza wa Jal. Cry. Reflect how, how hurt you are for wronging yourself, for your shortcomings, for transgressing the limits of Allah Azza wa Jal. But the important issue here, brothers and sisters, is not just to call upon Allah Azza wa Jalla and cry, whilst our deeds and actions don't reflect the same. We can't, we can't contradict ourselves by acting in a manner that goes way against and way opposite of what we are asking Allah Azza wa Jalla or trying to express to Allah Azza wa Jalla from ourselves. Those who are foremost. Those who hasten, those who compete, will be closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And we fear that if we delay, it's not too late. We delayed the first 20 days, we still have a chance. We're alive and Ramadan hasn't ended yet. So act, hasten, rush. Towards that forgiveness of Allah, towards that Jannah of Allah, lest you will be under those whom the Prophet ﷺ or about whom the Prophet ﷺ said, some people will continue to stay behind until Allah Azza wa leaves them behind, keeps them behind. He will keep them behind. He will not allow them to be into his enter into his mercy. And even if they happen to enter Jannah, but after punishment, then they will be amongst those who enter last. And even when they enter, their ranks will be lower than others who competed, who hastened, who rushed to the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sheikh al Uthaymeen rahmatullah alayhi said, it is feared that if a person gets himself used to slacking and being lazy and not hastening to the acts of worship, that Allah Azza wa Jal will test him to always be behind in all acts of worship, in all gates of virtue and goodness. 
and that's just going to be as Allah Azza wa Jal said jaza'an wifaqa a recompense proportioned to your action to your evil deeds to your conduct to your behavior towards Allah's commands and calls and good deeds how you react to that the recompense is going to be proportional the the doors of goodness the gates of jannah are many we can do anything saying subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar spending in charity crying in regret in remorse to your evil deeds calling upon your kinship forgiving others being kind to your wife or to your husband fearing Allah Azza wa Jal in the way you raise your children. All of these are good deeds. Reciting Quran, standing up in prayer, supplicating Allah, asking forgiveness, sending Salah on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All these are things that you can do. And many of them, many of them don't take an effort. So let's hasten. Let's compete. Let's make up before we die. Because death doesn't take permission, it doesn't need a visa, it doesn't recognize age, place, time, season, anything. It has no boundaries, it is just a command, kun, and the angel of death would take our soul. So let's hasten towards being amongst those whom Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has utaqa, those who are freed from the fire of hell. If we are not or we're not amongst those in the first 20, let's make sure we work towards being amongst those in the next 10. And you know what being amongst al-utaqa, al-itq, as the people of knowledge said, it is a state with which Allah Azza wa Jal will not throw that person into hell ever. Meaning, even if he sins, even if he falls short, short, Allah Azza wa Jal will enable him to repent, to make up, stand up and go again. We stumble, we're human beings, we stumble and fall. If we happen to be amongst those whom Allah frees from the fire of hell, those who will never enter hell, then even if we do something wrong, Allah, out of His mercy and bounty and favor, would enable us to hasten to repentance and make it up what we did wrong. It's worth it, brothers and sisters. It deserves the effort. Let's get tired 10 nights. It might be nine. So let's work. Let's hasten. The message is race to Jannah. Hasten to Jannah. Compete to Jannah. Take the first step and leave the rest to Allah. We ask Allah's mercy and favor and forgiveness. Allahumma ameen. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallah, Muhammadik, Ashhadu Allah, ilaha illa ant, Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.